everyone. It's Danny. Welcome to another Cocoa Vanilla Studio layout. This one is very exciting. It's my first layout using the amazing new Storyteller collection. And let me just tell you, I have been waiting for this collection to come out because I have graduation photos to scrap. So I've had these photos for a while, <laughs> for quite a while now, um, but I couldn't use them. Um, because I didn't have the right collection. And the colours in this collection are just perfect. They're absolutely gorgeous. The blues and the yellows in particular are perfect for the blues and the yellows in my photos. So I am starting out here with uh, an almost 4x6 photo, just uh, slightly smaller. And I've got a card there from the pocket cards that I'm planning on using for my title. So it's not a traditional title, but this page just felt like I really needed something more than just a short kind of trite title. Um, I feel like this card really kind of sums up the the gravity of this occasion. This was a really big moment in my life and I felt like, you know, just a two or three word title wasn't going to cut it and I really love the sentiment on this card. So I'm going through here. I'm playing with some of the florals in the floral ephemera pack. I'm just pulling them out and auditioning them, seeing which ones I want to use because I am going to do a bunch of stitching and I don't want to do any more stitching than I have to because it's a lot of work. Um, I don't actually end up going with that a background paper either. It was really just um, I was using it for a... 12 by 12 template. I guess I just needed the right size of paper and it's the one I had um, to the side there, but I'm not actually going to use it for a background. So I'm just tucking in um, all these florals. I wanted to use some of the, the larger pieces, the smaller florals, some of these little um, berry sprigs, some of the leaves. So I'm trying to get a good balance of all of those and creating my three clusters there. Okay, so I've got those all set aside and I've put them in a little pile there, keeping them separate. And now I'm going to start piercing some holes. So this is just a hole piercing tool. You can use anything um, that comes to a sharp point to pierce holes. Um, you can buy these kind of tools from any kind of craft or a sewing store. And I've just got my uh, piercing mat from Amy Tangerine and then I've got a notepad underneath that because um, it's not quite enough, that piercing mat, to protect my desk. It definitely does go through, <laughs> so I need something behind it. And I'm just following all the little lines that are already on the floral there so hopefully yep there we go you can see it's got those kind of curved lines and I did pierce some of the holes in the middle as well because I am going to do something with those also so you can see that I'm doing that I'm not doing all of those little white spots I'm just doing a few of them and then I'm going to come through with my embroidery thread I've had a few people ask um, what colors I'm using like what the the code of the color is and these aren't like DMC floss so I don't know if the colors are the same as um, your normal D DMC floss that you would buy in a craft store uh, I get mine from Amazon I get them in big packs of like a hundred different colors um, I, I don't think they're necessarily branded there's no brand on the actual tag of the floss um, so I, I'm sorry for that that I can't give you a better um, color guide but if you're not sure, if you don't have any embroidery thread and you're really not sure where to start and you want to get going, I highly recommend having a look on Amazon and just getting a starter kit with a bunch of different colors. And you should find something in that kit or in that pack that will be close enough to the kind of color that you want when you're just starting out. And it's quite, um, you know, it's good value for money. It's quite inexpensive. So what I've done here is I've just split that six strand embroidery thread thread into um, half. So I've got three strands that I'm stitching at a time. And for this particular flower, I'm going to go ahead and do a whipped back stitch. So I'll just zoom in here for a second so you can see a little bit better. Uh, most people who have done any kind of um, stitching will be familiar with a back stitch. It's really, really simple. It's just a, a normal straight stitch where you come up one hole ahead of where you've come out from and then go back down next to that first thread. So just tucking my ends under the back there. You don't have to do that, just keep some neater. So back through and then for a back stitch, you come up uh, one hole ahead. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that all the way around that flower. And then once I have finished with that row of back stitch, I'm going to come up again through the very last hole in the row. And then I'm just going to slip my needle underneath the threads that I've done following along the threads. And this is the, the whipped part. So the first stitches are the back stitch and this is the whipping. So I'm literally just threading my thread back through the top of those threads um, in kind of like a 
uh, a twisted around, wrapped around motion. So just sliding my needle straight underneath those stitches. I'm not stitching through the threads. I'm just slipping it underneath. And then when you pull it tight, so you don't have to pull it really tight, just when you pull it snug, it makes a really cool little effect. And then back through the last hole. And you can see there, you can't see those individual stitches anymore because that thread has wrapped around them and it's covered up the holes quite a bit as well. So it, it gives this really cool kind of twisted ropey effect, which is a, a really fun texture to play with. And it's really super simple, so much simpler than doing something like a stem stitch or a split stitch, which might be a little bit unfamiliar to some people who haven't done any kind of embroidery. So I'm not going to show you all of the stitching I do on these, of course, because I was at it for quite a while. I just want to show you a basic demonstration of the main kind of stitches that I'm using, just in case um, you've never had a go at this before. I know a lot of you have, but a lot of you may never have attempted these. So I just want to kind of show you each of the stitches. So here, as you can see from this flower, those lines are kind of radiating out from the middle of the flower up towards the edge of the petals. So I'm just going to do a really large um, single stitch along each of those lines. And I did unfortunately go in and out of focus a bit while I was doing this. It's really hard to um, keep the camera in focus while you're zoomed in really closely, but you can see I've just pierced some holes near the center of the flower and then I am just threading that back and forth out to the end of those lines. So just one really large stitch really. And it can be tricky stitching on paper or cardboard as opposed to fabric because uh, paper does have a tendency to rip if you're not careful. And of course, if you do rip the paper, that's kind of game over for your stitching. So you can see there I've zoomed in. So I'm just being careful not to pierce holes too close together because that is one thing that can rip paper and just being careful to not be too rough while I'm pulling my needle through. Okay, now this is a really quick and easy stitch to do um, that adds a lot of impact. It's a lazy daisy stitch, which is essentially a single link of a chain link stitch. So you can see I've pierced a hole near the outside of the center of the flower there, just at the base of the petal. And then I have pierced two holes close together near the outer edge of the petal. So I'm going to come up through that first hole and then back through the first hole, leaving a loop. So not pulling the thread all the way through. And then I'm going to pass my needle up through the first of those two holes that are pierced close together near the outside of the petal. So up through that first hole and then my needle will pass through that loop and I will pull it snug. I'm just fixing up the back there. And then the needle goes back down through the second hole on the other side of the loop. So that will anchor the loop down and keep it nice and secure. You could theoretically pierce one hole and just do that stitch up and back through the one hole, but you do have a risk of pulling the end of the loop through to the back of your um, paper or whatever you're stitching on. So I find it's better to pierce two holes. Um, they're about two millimeters apart. And that way you get a nice um, flush, flat stitch that, you know, doesn't pull through to the back. And I'm just going to go all the way around this flower and do that. So those are the basic stitches that I'm going to do. Um, some of them are just a, a long stitch. Some of them are this lazy daisy stitch. Um, some of them I did the lazy daisy stitch, but I did it quite long. So um, just adding a little bit of variation. This is what it ends up looking like. And here are all my flowers and leaves with all their stitching. So you can see it adds a lot of interest and a lot of detail. And in real life, you can really see that different texture and that raised detail. So um, it definitely adds a lot of impact to your pages. Now I've finished all the main stitching, but I'm just going to quickly demonstrate a French knot here because I do do quite a few French knots on, um, on these flowers. And French knots can be really scary when you first start. They seem um, really confusing and I think a lot of people really struggle with them. But once you get the hang of it, they're super, super easy. Um, so it's literally just passing up through the back of the flower, wrapping the thread around a needle twice, and then passing the needle back through the original hole, just keeping that thread that you're holding there, the loose end of the thread, nice and taut. And then pulling down through and that's a knot. Super, super simple. Um, it can just take a little bit of practice, I guess, getting the 
the tension right. And it is a two-handed kind of procedure, as you can see. So pulling up through the back and then you kind of need to hold the needle and the piece of ephemera in one hand while you wrap the thread around the other hand, kind of like that. So that can be a little bit tricky, but as long as you hold that thread somewhat taut with your left hand, as I'm doing, and then I'll just pop my thumb over the top while I hold the thread and the ephemera at the same time, and then just pulling the needle through and just being careful not to pull too hard. As you can see, I was kind of trying to ease it through rather than just yank it through because um, that's a good way to rip your piece of ephemera is by, yeah, being a bit rough. So I'm just going to quickly go through and demonstrate that. Um, I love French knots on layouts. I think they look great. Um, and they're a lot of fun to do once you've got the hang of them. And then I'm just tying off in the back with a quick knot. And then we'll speed up because uh, this, <laughs> this video is already quite long. So on some of the flowers, I just did um, two or three knots. And on some of them, like this one, I covered most of the center of the flower with knots. And some of them I used, I think this one I used four threads. And then some of them I just used two threads. So some of them are quite small and delicate and some of them are kind of bigger and chunkier. All right, moving on to the rest of the layout. No more stitching, I promise. <laughs> um, so this is the Spring Fling 12 by 12 pattern paper. I'm just going to use this to add a border to my page because I want to use a white background. Uh, but if you've been following me for any length of time, you'll know I really struggle with white backgrounds. So adding a border just kind of helps make it feel less intimidating. Struggling with my ATG as usual. So I'm just going to get that ad adhered down. Uh, I chose this pattern paper because it's got all those florals in it. Um, so it really matches the florals I'm going to use on the page as the ephemera. And um, you can just see the edges of it peeking out. So I've really only got about half a centimeter of a border all the way around. And um, I just really love how you can see those florals peeking out from behind. So now I'm just using my fingernail to distress the edges. I'm just kind of bending the edges up a little bit and I'm just gently distressing them. I kind of like the way this looks as opposed to using an edge distresser, which kind of fluffs up the edges. This just kind of bends them up nicely, um, but you can use either, either or, or just leave it flat if you prefer a clean finish. So here I'm just cutting off the extra border off my photo. Um, I printed it with a large border on purpose just because I wanted it I wanted it to be a large photo, but I thought four by six might just be a little bit too big. So um, I've just taken off uh, about a half inch all the way around, I think. And I'm leaving a bit of a white border on the photo because I do like that effect. I just feel like it makes them look a little more finished. Just dressing the edges of my journal card. Again, you could just leave this as it is if you want it kind of look clean and, and crisp. I kind of like a, a bit more of a distressed look. And in keeping with that, I'm going to add a hand-drawn border as well. Just, I don't know, <laughs> I think it feels a little bit lazy or unfinished if I just stick a journal card on a layout. I don't know why. Um, that's totally a personal thing. I just feel like I need to add my own little touch to it. So that's going to go pretty much exactly there. And I did take a photo while I was laying out my floral ephemera um, when I first auditioned all my pieces so that I could remember where, <laughs> um, where they went. So I've just pulled out my phone and I'm referring to that photo and just placing those florals back where they belonged. And I'm really glad I did this because I have a horrible habit of saying to myself, I will remember where these all go. And of course, I never do. So um, this has just made this quite easy for me. And I do end up moving one or two bits from their original positions. I think um, I, I think I just varied how they were overlapping with each other, but in general, they follow the original layout pretty well. Uh, all right, so I completely wasted my time putting those florals back because I'm not even going to leave them there. I'm going to take them off and then I will put them back again. Uh, but first, I'm just outlining where my photo and my title card are going because I want to add some splatters. So I kind of jumped the gun putting the florals back because I didn't know I wanted two splatters. Um, but it does give me a good idea of where I want my splatters to go now because uh, I just really want some nice delicate splatters behind where my florals are going to be. And of course, I go overboard on this as I do with most things, <laughs> um, but I think it's okay. I do have the white background. So yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. 
I'm just using two of my cheap watercolor sets. The first set is uh, just from Officeworks. It's like $25 or $30, not expensive. And this is a pearl um, watercolor set from Spotlight. Again, really inexpensive. I think it was only like $10 or something like that. Um, they're not the most pigmented colors, but they give a really pretty nice pearlescent kind of shiny finish, um, which is really nice. Adds a, another level of texture to your layout. So I'm just going through with the colors that are in the collection. This is a red and I've chosen to use the pearlescent colors for the red because it takes away some of that blood splatter effect that you can sometimes get when you use uh, red paints to do splatters. Um, so just adding that pearlescent finish makes it a little bit less kind of gory looking. Um, so I've just used that and now I'm coming in with some bright yellow to match the yellow in the collection. And I do start to mix up this pale pink, but I decided to go back into the pearl ones to use the pink in there. And in hindsight, I probably should have chosen um, two, maybe maximum three colors to do my splatters with because it is looking a little bit, I don't know, it's a lot. Um, but I kind of got carried away as, as per usual. Um, and I'm happy with how it looks in the end. I mean, it looks a bit crazy now, but I think once I put the florals back over the top, it covers a lot of the splatters up so it doesn't look so, so full on. So now I'm adding back my large pieces. And those hand-drawn outlines are really helping me position those back where they originally were. Um, and I have added some dimensional foam on the back of my photo there, as you can see. And I've just, uh, it looks a bit odd because I've placed it kind of, it looks random. But really what I've done is I have made sure to put the foam in places where it's not going to interfere with the tucking of the ephemera. So around the top of the photo on the edges, I am going to tuck ephemera underneath. So I really don't want the foam stuck straight to the back there because it will kind of, you know, interfere with that. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just laying my photo over the top. I did originally have the title card overlapping my photo, but I decided that I want the photo to be more of the focus. So I'm going to lay that over the top. And once again, putting all my florals back. So I'll speed through this a little bit quicker. And uh, I did cut out me gluing these all down because you've already seen me place them. So I just used a lot of tacky glue on the back of these florals because all that stitching makes adhering these to the background paper a lot more difficult. All right, and then nearly done. I'm just going to cut out three of the butterflies from this pattern paper. This is from the A5 paper stack. So they are a smaller um, version of the large butterflies in the 12 by 12. So they're perfect, tiny, little, delicate sized butterflies. Um, I really love these. They're probably one of my favorite things in the Coco Vanilla Studio collection is um, the tiny butterflies that they tend to do on the um, smaller format pattern papers. I love the larger ones as well. I just find that I can really tuck these tiny ones in and around everywhere. So I'm just bending these in half and then I'm going to glue them down along um, the middle of their bodies and leave the wings sitting up. Now, usually I would add some foam behind the wings, but I think the rest of the embellishments on this layout are dimensional enough that it's going to, um, the page protector won't press down on the wings anyway. Next, I'm going to pull out the wood buttons and I'm going to use three of the teeny tiny ones, um, one in each of the clusters. So a blue one on top of the flower there. Uh, I do change my mind a couple of times on this. So I am going to swap that flower one down to this bottom cluster. And I did pull off the foam dot, so a bit annoyed with myself, but that one's just going to go there, tucked under that floral slightly and then little heart one up there and then finally I'm going to add two of the puffy hearts to each of the clusters so I'm just varying up the colors slightly so that they're not all the same and I do move those two bottom ones a little bit in a minute um, but otherwise that is going to be it the layout is finished I could have kept going but I really liked how it was looking and I didn't want to overload it so thank you so much for joining me today the link to the blog post is in the description box. Close-ups are coming up at the end. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.